Starling Tracy Baker by Jacqueline Wilson. The next morning, I called Jenny in her office and asked if she had a big jiffy bag so I could send my presents to my mom. It's a little bit early to send your Christmas presents, isn't it, Tracy? Jenny said. No, no, these are before Christmas presents, I said. We have to send them all first thing on Monday morning, first class. Okay, first thing, first class. I suppose I'm playing, paying the postage, said Jenny. Yes, and can you write on the jiffy bag organ? Open immediately. Look, maybe I better do it, I said. I think I can manage that, Tracy, said Jenny. You're sure you've got my mom's right address? I asked anxiously. They don't let me have it now on account of the fact that I tried to run away to find her. They won't let me have her phone number either. It is bitterly unfair, seeing as she's my mother. I have had major mega drops about it, but they won't give in. Don't worry, Tracy, I've got your mom's address, said Jenny. It's just that it's ultra important. I need her to come and see me in the school play, I said. I'm so glad you've been picked for the play, Tracy. You will take it seriously, won't you? No messing around or you'll spoil it for everyone. Of course I'm tra taking it seriously, Jenny, I said, insulted. I was taking it very, very seriously. Unlike some people, we had a play rehearsal every lunchtime and half the kids marched about and ate their sandwiches as they mumbled their lines. The carol singers sang of key and the extra goats whimpered rather than wild and the dancers kept bumping into each other and Witty Peter kept forgetting his lines. He even forgot which was his slim leg, leaping first on his left leg and then on his right. You're just so totally useless, Peter. How can you possibly keep forgetting? God bless us, everyone, said Justin, big mouth, little wood. She sized hold of him and made like she was peering into his ear. Yes, just as I thought. You've not got any brain at all. It's just empty space inside your needy, naughty head. I was thinking on similar lines myself, but when I saw poor Peter's face crumble, I felt furious with her. You leave Peter alone, Justin, great big bully little wood. His Going just fine, unlike you. I've never seen such a pesky ghost in all my life. You're meant to be spooky, but you couldn't scare so much as a sausage. Miss Sinkins clapped her hands. Hey, hey, girls, calm down now. Concentrate on the play, she said. Justin, you could put a little more effort into your Marley portal. Tracy, maybe you could try a little less. You're a splendid scourge, but you don't need to follow your bro and school quite so fiercely. And I think spitting at people when you say bah humbug is a little too emphatic. Plus, I don't think the care caretaker would approve of you dribbling all over the stage. I'm simply getting under the skin of a character, Miss Sinkins, I said. She wasn't listening. She was busy separating the spare ghost into a hunting formation. Yeah, you get under everyone's skin, Tracy Baker. He's just a make no effort at all, little wood. You like a big pussy pimple, Lucy giggled. What? Watch out. Out or we'll squeeze you, she said. I gave her a shove. She shoved me back. Justin shoved too harder. I was a bit of balance, hunched up in 
crept scourge mode. I ended up on my bottom. They laughed. I tried not to cry because it hurt so much. Not that I ever cry, of course. But sudden shocks to my system suddenly bring on the attack of my hay fever. It wasn't just bumping my bum. It was the fact that Lucy was being so horrible. I was used to just a mean mouse little wood being full to me, but it was so unfair that Lucy was ganging out with her against me. Lucy had always been my friend. Now I didn't have any friend at all apart from Reedy Peter, and he barely counted. She's crying, you baby, said Justin. Walking bird, big, big, little wood. Why don't you fight back, Tracy? said Lucy, looking uncomfortable. She's lost her bottle, said Justin, half a pig, little wood. Boo hoo, boo hoo, baby. Those little Didos wants her mumsy to kiss it better. Only three months did, did mums cause mumsy isn't ever ever going to come. I'll show you if I've lost my bottle, I said, surging to my feet. I went push, push, whack, kick, just in real backwards, her big nose all bloody after intimate contact with my feet. At that piss moment, Mrs. Doro, the head teacher, came through the swing doors to see how the Christmas play was progressing. For a second, we were all stopped in our tracks, as if we'd been paused. Then we were fast forward into a alarming and ear-slipping action. Justice started screaming. Lucy did too, though I didn't even touch her. Peter started wailing. Some of the ki little kids, dancers, and carol singers started whimpering. Miss Sinkis looked like she wanted to burst into tears too. Whimper saw, wah, 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 boo hoo, sniffle. She rushed over to Justin and picked her up and peered at her bloody nose. Mrs. Daryl marched over to me, snorting through her nose. Tracy Baker, how dare you attack another pupil? How many times have I got to tell you that I will not have fighting in my school? But Miss Barlow, it was actual, exactly my fault. I didn't start it, I protested. I wasn't going to tell towels on Justin's secret fountain for a nose little wood. But I felt I needed to indicate that I'd been severely provoked. Mrs. Dora clapped her hands at me to shut me up. In my experience, it's always your fault. Tracy Baker, she said, this was profoundly unfair. I wish I had enough bottles left to push punch wick kick Mrs. Doro. I wanted to see her sprawling on her back, arms and legs flung out, skirts up, knickers showing. It was such a bizarre image that I couldn't have sniggling. This was fatal. How dare you act as if this is a laughing matter. I'm tried to off your temper tantrums. You're going to have to learn your lessons once and for all. You will not take part in the school play this Christmas. But I have to be in the play, Mrs. Darrow. I'm Scrooge. I'm the main part. Not anymore, said Mrs. Darrow. My mom's coming to see me, I said. I write in and told her all about it, and she's coming specially. I can't help that, Tracy Baker. You're not taking part in the school play, and that's that. I lost it, them. Totally out of it, lost it. I opened my mouth and started yelling. Miss Sinkins put her arm around me, but I shook her off. Peter clasped my hand, but I worked it free. I lay down, shut my eyes, and shook, and shook, and shook, and shook. Eventually, 
Someone hooked me up and carried me off to the sick room. I opened my eyes momentarily. Justin hit her gut. Little Wood was sitting on her chair with her head back, a big wad of tissue clutched to her bleeding nose. I closed my eyes and carried on shortly. I heard murmurings and mutterings. When I next opened my eyes, I couldn't see Justin. I didn't know what had had happened to her. I didn't care. I wish everyone in the whole world would disappear, everyone except my mom. I thought about my mom getting her Christmas presents, looking at a copy of a Christmas Carol, dressing up in her prettiest clothes, and tying her heart necklace round her neck, rubbing her hand lotion on her slim fingers, and applying her new lipstick into a shiny. Pink smile. I saw her arriving at the school on twentieth December, sitting right at the front, ready to watch me act. Only I wouldn't be in it. I wouldn't be in it. I wouldn't be in it. I shared some more, even though my throat ached and my heart thumped, and I was burning hot and wet with sweat. I knew it was time to stop howling, but I couldn't. I tried clamping my mouth shut, but the sharks blew up inside it, and then came shouting out louder than ever. It was so scary that I started shaking. I couldn't stop. I was cursed like a creature in a fairy tale, condemned to scream for all eternity. Then I felt new hands. On my shoulders, and Janice's familiar, firm voice. Easy, Tracy. It's okay. I'm here now. They sent for me. Now stop the noise. I, I can't. I shrugged. Yes, you can. Take deep breaths in, and now out. That's the ticket. Don't worry. I've got you. You're stopping now. See? I clung to Jenny like a little toddler. She's. Knelt down and rocked me while I nuzzled into her shoulder. Okay now, she said eventually. Now I paused. I opened my eyes and blinked her, peering around the room. Justin, I whispered. She's being taken to hospital, said Jenny, sighing. Oh, I started shaking again. What had I done? I only dabbed her on the nose. I'd done that several times before, and she'd never been hurt enough to go to hospital. But what if I hit her so hard her entire nose had burst, and now she just had a big bloody blob in the middle of her face? What if her whole head had exploded, and now they were trying to? Stitch all the bits back together again. I hated Justin, and I always would, but I didn't want her to be seriously hurt. What if she didn't get better? What if she bled so much she died? I picture her lying there, limp and white, in hospital. Doctors and nurses and Lucy and Justin stand gathered round her bedside. I saw her phone. All the dumping ground kids trailing around in black behind her hairs. I saw Lucy weeping, carrying a huge verse. I tried to tell her I was sorry, but she turned on me and told me I was a murderer. Everyone started murmuring, "The awful word murderer, murderer Tracy Baker is a murderer," and then I heard. Sirens and a whole squad of police cars arrived, and the police leaped out and ran ran towards me, brandishing their torches. And I started to run in terror, screaming, "Tracy, don't start again!" said Jenny. "I'm sure Justin is okay. Well, she's not. Her poor nose bled horribly, and you are going to be." Severely punished for it, my girl. But I don't think there's any long-term harm. Mrs. Dorlo is worried you might have broken Justin's nose, but I think she's overreacting a little. Now I'm going to take you back home. You need to calm down in the quiet room. Then we'll talk things over and see what we can do. 
I let her stare at me out in of the room and down the corridor. And the bell had gone for playtime, and there were hundreds of kids milling up and down, staring, staring, staring. Look at Tracy Baker. What's the matter with Tracy Baker? He someone said she had this generous tantrum and screamed her head off. She screamed all sorts of bad words at Mrs. Darlow. She attacked just a little wound, and she's been rushed to hospital in an ambulance. She punched Mrs. Darlow right on the nose. She's not allowed to be in the school play anymore. I moaned and snored and sniffed. Jenny gave me a gentle push past them all, out through the doors and across the playground. I started shivering and shaking, knocking my eyes to try to dry them up. I hated it that so many of them had seen me in a state. It's different at dumping ground. Everyone understands that look after kids are a bit like fireworks with very short fuzzes. Beware ma matches. Some of us just do a little feast and miss when someone sets them up. Beauty Peter's mini tantrums are like little kitty sparkles. Some of us explode loudly like bangers, but it's all over quickly without too much show. And some of us are like mega rockets and we soar and swoop and explode into a million stars. No prizes for guessing which firework I fit. They don't get it at school. They especially don't get me. I didn't mind them knowing I sucked Justin. I rather like it that they sucked. I punch Mrs. Dorla. But I hate them all seeing me in a such a state, all blood, sweat and tears. I didn't mind the blood. I didn't mind the sweat. But Tracy Baker doesn't cry ever, not publicly anyway. The end of the part five.